We're going to be getting started here in just a few minutes. Um, welcome to the OROC Technologies New Technology Overview, and welcome uh, to our Soup GovSolve community. We're thrilled that you all are here today. Um, the purpose of this is really to bring you some latest and greatest technology that we think is very relevant in the federal market and really could help differentiate you as we are starting to roll into federal buying season. But first and foremost, let me introduce some of our uh, support team here today on the call. I'm Michelle Chapin, Director of Business Development at Cinex GovSolve. Thrilled to be with you all. Also, we have Eric Van Arstall, who is the VP of Federal at OROC Technologies. Welcome, Eric. Thank you, Michelle. And we also have our very own Charlie Barnett. He is part of our Stellar team. He is the Cloud Strategist business development manager for us. Welcome, Charlie. Happy to have you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. Well, one of the things before we get started in an, uh, an overview on their deal reg and technology, et cetera, is this is relevant because OROC is already FedRAMP certified. Many of you are going to have that on bids coming up, and that is very relevant, obviously. And as we've all seen the importance of security with what's just happened in the pipeline, um, security and cloud security is so important. So with that, any further ado, I will pass over to Eric. And as always, um, this is live. So please put any questions into the chat and we will strive to answer them. So Eric, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, thank you, Charlie. So Eric Van Arstall, I'm the VP of Federal Sales at OROC Technologies. Uh, we're an emerging technologies company. A uh, little bit about my background and how I ended up at a cloud company is I was a uh, government civilian uh, for the Department of Navy running cybersecurity for the DDD guided missile destroyer program. Um, there I oversaw a lot of new policy and new, a lot of new um, strategies and architecture and security around uh, Internet of Things approaches and how are we going to do things better. So. From there, I ended up at Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab, where I was the Navy Cyber Engineering Manager uh, overseeing air and missile defense programs. And how I ended up at uh, OROC Technologies, a cloud service provider, is that I was doing a lot of virtualization uh, technologies and trying to figure out how to secure virtualization and be able to trust it uh, in order to do some really awesome things in the DOD. Uh, you know, shrinking footprints, um, trusting different architectures, common computing hardware, etc. Um, and that's actually where I'm doing a lot of business or having a lot of conversations with customers today is really how do we move this um, computing to the edge? How are we able to utilize virtualization technology, i.e. shared resource technology or cloud at the edge on-prem um, or in the public cloud. And what I put up on the screen is a report that came out, um, which I think tells a lot of truth, which is why have people not adopted or expanded their cloud um, practices? And for me, uh, what I see is a lot of it is the securing the cloud, securing virtualization. Um, the other ones are really centered more around the um, the cost predictability, um, egress fees, et cetera, and the governance and compliance. So a lot of people just don't trust this technology. And I think we're going to walk through some at a high level, some really cool things and why that that is starting to change. Um, and as always, so, um, feel free to put some questions out there in the chat and Michelle and Charlie will help guide me uh, if anything comes in. Can you go over egress for those of us that may not be cloud savvy, the Wikipedia version of egress for us. Yeah, in fact, we're going to jump into that here in a minute, but egress fees is uh, all about using your data, right? So egress fees, meaning that if once you get your data into the cloud, um, there's a, something called an egress fee that you have to pull your data out uh, from storage in order to use it. So if you're not really familiar with how you use your data, um, you know, that can be very costly and um, coming out of the DOD, a lot of times we don't have those details. So um, trying to move into that more predictable cost uh, structure is really important for our customers. And we're, get, we're I'm going to show you a slide on that here in just a minute. Um, 
want to kick off right off the bat and talk about some of our, our partner incentive programs and our value propositions. So, um, OROC is what we're trying to do is the easy button button for adding a CSP to your portfolio. Um, you know, we can help customers reduce their overall uh, TCO of cost of ownership. We are a white glove support um, organization through all stages of the sales cycle. Uh, we have flexible services um, um, engagement based on all of your all of our partner skills, and I think we have great upfront margins up to 15% in the single tier model. And of course, compelling back end program rates as well. Um, over on the right side, you'll see uh, this is, does require uh, approved deal registration in the OROC portal. So, uh, what all this means is come work with us. We really want to be able to work with you guys and shape, um, you know, different opportunities and help you adopt or expand your cloud practice. Uh, we are. Yeah, I'm hearing something right here, if that's okay. There's you're from the Cynic side, and there's many partners on this call that, that work with us and purchase from us. And I'll tell you from our from our cloud business, which again, that's still our team that I'm a part of. Um, I would just say to the partners listening, this is I don't, if you're just standing up a cloud practice or you're looking to expand and have a hybrid offering of multiple cloud options for your partners, which is a smart way to go right now, meaning go in that direction. This is a very lucrative. That's one of the things we liked about it when we brought it on board. We recognize wow, our partners will really make a make a very strong margin, very good opportunity here to to generate a lot of revenue in a very needed area with a very secure tool. So just to make sure that was clear to, to some of those that again maybe kicking the tires on cloud, maybe just getting out there and beginning to build their their practice. But yeah, you know, the margins here have been we've we've seen partners be very excited about that. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. And and it's really important to us that you know we we develop that partner ecosystem where we have really trusted partnerships. We have people that are returning to us, working through Cenex, et cetera. And you know, we want to expand upon the first deal into multiple deals and and have you guys really come work with us. Um, because you can talk to us, you can pick up the phone and we will help you get through the, the full sales cycle. So um, throwing this one up, uh, just I want to paint the picture up front of who OROC Technologies is. As I said before, we are an emerging technologies company. Um, we are a CSP, a cloud service provider, but we operate very much like an ISV. Um, if you look at the gray box at the bottom, that's a private fiber. We own our own private fiber uh, network. So this allows us to do things differently. Um, you move up through the block and object storage into OpenStack. We are an open source technology company. We are built on OpenStack, which is the most widely used um, software to develop for um, private clouds, if you will. Um, we are upstream, so we we work with Red Hat and others, but we, being a true open source technology company, we have gone upstream on our OpenStack. And if you continue up the stack, you see that we do a uh, lot in virtual machines, bare metal and containers, um, all, all things that are really important to a cloud service provider. And something you see there as well is Intel and Lockheed Martin. We're doing some really, really cool stuff that we're gonna get into here um, at a high level, of course, that changes the security within virtual machines and changes the security in virtualization and how we can apply that technology. So I get really excited. So hopefully I won't go too deep on this call. And ultimately I want you guys to reach out to us and say, what can we do with this? We have this opportunity and we wanna work with you guys, right? So if you look across the top left, you see the customer benefits. It's the cost savings or the cost predictability, the no egress fees, performance compliance um, and simplified billing. Our model uh, from the ground up when our company was built was security in mind, right? So we were built to support that highly regulated industry. So government uh, puts out a lot of requirements. So we took those DOD type of re uh, government requirements um, in order to create the foundation of who we are. So what does that really mean? It means Fed ramp and impact level requirements. There's a D the DISA DOD. Um, cloud security requirements guide that 
853, all of these, the NIST, all those things are what really shaped who we are and how we do business. Um, then, of course, you can look over in the technical benefits and what I call the application of technology. Um, so, this is to paint the picture and we're going to jump into how we do this uh, a little more detail here. Um, again, hey, we're Eric, a quick question for you. You, you said, you said open source. Do yes. you truly mean open source? We are an open source technology company. Yes. Um, and what's really important, and I'm glad you bring open source up. So, um, in the DOD and a lot of your federal government. Um, if you go to other hyperscalers, um, what you're buying into is a proprietary API type of environment. So, even if you want to move your information out, you have to pay those egress fees. If you want your information and you want to put it in, say you want to move from one hyperscaler to the next, you actually have to refactor that API in order to use your data. So, if you go into an open source API and open API, that means that you can actually move your information into anyone else that's running an open API on prem or private cloud. And it really opens up the doors to where you're non, you're in a non proprietary um, um, type of environment, right? So, we, we threw around different ways of telling that story. It's called liberate your data, free your data. And I was actually really excited. I was on LinkedIn and following some of my uh, Navy buddies and they're putting stuff out that's called free the data. Uh, and the way that you do that is through open source. So, and there's a lot more open source developers than any other organization. So that really helps support security as well. So great, great question. And if anybody wants to find out more, um, please reach out to us. Um, so, yeah, so why are we different? A uh, little bit more compliance, security, cost predictability, and that flexibility and support. Flexibility in, is really becoming interesting with a lot of my customers. I was on a call last night with the Space Force um, and their organization, and they're like, hey, we want to do this. Can you guys support us? And I'm like, well, it depends on how this works, right? Like, what are you really trying to do? And they're like, what we really want to do is hybrid clusters. You know, on prem hybrid clusters and expand it out. And I'm like, well, that's great. We've already solved that problem. So, um, and that's the other cool thing about that open source or open API technology is we are a true hybrid cloud. So, and I've got an image down below that we'll, we'll go through that. So, again, it's that uh, flat rate pricing, no data egress fees, simplified billing, et cetera, no vendor lock in. We just talked about that. And the other thing that's really important um, to mention is we are a FedRAMP moderate cloud uh, currently. We are FedRAMP high ready. We are working through with a sponsor on our, our impact level five sponsorship. So working on our kickoff meeting, uh, hopefully any day now uh, with one of our DOD customers. And what that allows us to do is um, continue building out and being able to uh, hold and process CUI and up to NSS type of data. So that becomes really important as we uh, continue this journey. So here's a great chart that we love to show. Uh, this is really about that egress fees. This is um, one of our cost models on an estimated 50 terabytes of optics storage. So you can see AWS and Azure uh, where this really comes in. Uh, if you really know how you're using your data, um, that's one thing, but when you don't, and you, you know, we are, our cost is very similar to our, our hyper competitors uh, when it comes to storage, but what you see is we have zero egress fees. So that's how we're able to create that cost predictability model for you guys, and we can continue working that. And it doesn't matter how much you use, we, we maintain that zero across the board. So, I see that Eric Parkin had something. This is a slide that, again, from, from our side and on the Cinex Cloud Project, this slide resonates with a lot of people who the pain point has been with, with hyperscalers 
um, of the lack of price predictability. They can't, you know, and you, you think about a federal agency, maybe that, or a state agency or anyone else has a very fixed budget on what they can spend on compute and storage and things of that nature. It's not a conducive model for them to be constantly concerned with, okay, what's the, what's the, what's our cloud cost going to be this month versus next month versus next month. You know, this, the fact that you can really with OROC understand what your costs are going to be and unless that stores were to drastically change, you're pretty sure where you are every month. That can be a really big differentiator. So again, for the partners that are going to market, maybe you're already going to market with other cloud providers. That's fine. Have OROC on this, understand that OROC could be an offering that you can take to market and along with those for those that are very concerned about price predictability and cost. Um, or maybe it's one that you begin to lead with as you stand up with your practice around a product that is so secure, highly regulated, fed ramp, but also again that 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 price piece being such a such an understandable and and uh, manageable part of the of the solution. So that's just that really is truly a differentiator. Um, I think with you all. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Um, you made a couple of points that I want to hit on. Is that cost that predictable cost? Um, a lot of my customers are starting. Or starting to shy away from cloud technology or virtualized hyperscalers um, because of that. And it, it's very easy to go out and do some searches, find NASA, find you can find all kinds of examples of this. And when we're when we have operating budgets in the DOD or the federal space, you know, we we have to plan for this. And if when you're getting hit with these millions and multi-million dollar bills. Uh, that really starts to push people away from this model. And, you know, you have to remember what cloud was built for, which was, um, you know, accessibility. It's, you know, the, the model is great, but you have to be able to pair that with that predictable model. And we've done that for you guys. And hopefully we've also made that as simple as humanly possible because that's important to us. Another thing that you hit on, is working with the other hyperscalers. So multi-cloud, so you hear two things, multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. We are a true hybrid cloud, as I talked about earlier, but one thing that you just mentioned, which is multi-cloud, like being able to work with Azure, AWS, OROC, whoever it is, and in the DOD, because I, you know, this is deep and in depth, this is, you know, redundancy, survivabilities, et cetera. Uh, that multi-cloud thing is going to start being a much bigger issue and you're going to see a lot more of that. So, again, we're one of those organizations that you can really come talk to us. You can work with us. You can sit down and say, this is the best architecture because this is how we meet these requirements. Um, and whenever you look at um, the requirements that are survivability, redundancy, backup, et cetera, uh, just Throwing that out, throwing this one out there. Um, this is our current data center. We have node over in New York. Uh, expanded, we have our own private fiber. Uh, so uh, it's just good for you to see where we're at. We we do a bunch of really cool stuff. Again, on the FedRAMP side, we have 325 plus controls in the FedRAMP moderate cloud, 425 plus in the high cloud. Uh, once you get into impact levels, you really start getting into that tailored control area. What you want to be able to do is you want to be able to inherit um, all of these controls um, as a customer. So we try to make that as easy as possible for you as well. Again, it's all about being able to work with us. Um, because of where we were born uh, with security in mind and in the DOD, we have a US based knock and sock. Uh, this is all US personnel. There are requirements for it. We can get deep into the different types of knock and sock if you guys. Uh, interested in that. Uh, and then I want to get into what we call the OROC hardened security. So security in mind with virtualization. So five years ago, we didn't understand that this technology actually existed. So when you're talking shared resource technology, there's things called side channel attacks. There's ways of losing data. There's a lot of reasons why your highly regulated industries have not adopted or expanded the cloud. So general purpose, we are really after, um, you know, highly regulated mission critical, you know, we're different than the other hypervisors and uh, would love to be able to show you guys in a, a more in depth 
overview and a more in depth like demonstration of how this works. Um, one thing to note is this technology is basically a virtualized bare metal. Um, the reason that this works is our partnership with Lockheed Martin and Intel. So Lockheed Martin about 12 years ago had a very specific requirement that they had to meet. So in order to shrink um, and share resources because of size limitations on some really cool stuff, uh, they had to go down this route and they said, well, instead of creating our own chips, we want to partner with someone. So they partnered with Intel. So in what they've done is they've created a commercial or a cost-based product. They've been able to solve this problem um, and also influence the chipsets. So this is a firmware-based capability that's rooted in hardware. So now you're talking CMMC, you're talking about secure supply chains, uh, secure routes of trust. Everything happens from the BIOS um, or root all the way up through the stack and we can uh, talk a lot more about this. But basically this is bare metal, just virtualized. So you're able to get the economy of scale, um, but still get bare metal. So talk a little bit more about this. Um, is basically this is a new hypervisor. So I know this gets really deep, but this is a type zero versus a type one or two, which is your KVM. And again, this is something that I would love for you guys to just reach out. If you want to learn more that we can do things differently from a public cloud or private on-prem, etc. Again, this is you know your legacy hypervisor on the left, rock hard and security on the right. This is a pure isolation. So you have a type zero hypervisor that is dedicating resources, completely isolating um, compute, memory cache, all, all of the things on the right. So it's absolutely dedicated and there's no way to um, have leakages, et cetera. And that's what this is really showing, right? So on the left, uh, think about spectrum meltdown. It's very, very relevant. Think about the, the oil or the pipeline that Michelle talked about. Uh, think about critical infrastructures while well, I know some of it's in the federal space, some of it's in the private, it all matters. So if you're able to solve security, if you're able to really demonstrate this, and we can do that because of our partners with Intel and Lockheed, um, this is really going to be game changing in being able to push people to adopt or expand their cloud practices, right? Um, so we're really excited about it. Hopefully you guys reach out. This is a, just a quick view of what this really means. The chart on the right means that is dot data loss or that is susceptible to people um, stealing your data. Like think about OPM and all these different people if they're using cloud. Like that is um, that is uh, vulnerabilities that you're seeing on the left. That is actually OHS running and uh, you don't have that leakage. So. It's really geeky and I love to live in that space. Michelle tells me to stay out of it. So um, <laughs> again, uh, it becomes a lot of fun. So what what does this compare to? It compares to bare metal, which bare metals, high security, high performance and high cost, right? It's low resource utilization. That's why you go to the cloud. You're trying to get away from that. Um, or you go to a dedicated host, You're, which dedicated host again is high security, high cost. Again, it's low resource utilization. So where do you want to be? You want to be in the cloud if you can, um, based on risk posture, which is OHS in this case, right? Um, we want to prove it to you guys. We're doing this with the DOD right now. Like I said, Space Force, Navy, um, trying to get into Army, et cetera, uh, trying to get into Homeland Security and some of these really cool places, um, you know, places I like to go and geek out. So OHS in the center, high security, high resource utilization, lower cost, and bare metal like performance. So this is deterministic performance, right? So um, workloads that are latent intolerant systems, right? So again, so, it's a completely, go ahead. Yeah, so I know Eric is giving, probably a lot of folks on the call know a lot about this, but understand that OROC is open to work with you on your procurements, on your proposals. They've got a dedicated proposals team so don't think you've got to take this and figure out how to bid it or work on it. Uh, bring it to OROC and bring it to their proposals team 
and they can help you with that bid to bid this kind of a high end solution for a true hybrid cloud for something that's fed ramp, et cetera, and open source, right? So um, maybe what we can do, Eric, is if there are key words or key things about things coming up on bids for them to look for, maybe we can highlight some of those things so they can be looking for that as some opportunities may be coming forward on RFQs. Yeah, in fact, if, if you guys reach out or we can, uh, whenever you guys send something out, we can give you some bullet points. Um, you know, on prim private infrastructures, there's a lot of, like, Dove Cloud, there's a lot of people that are, um, in fact, um, my, my um, um, proposals team, I'm trying to help educate that, okay, just because it doesn't say cloud doesn't mean that they're not really looking for cloud, right? Um, this is, and for we, um, actually on the next slide, is we do the, pro the public cloud, um, you know, that's what people traditionally the cloud, but as you get into the hybrid cloud, so it's hybrid cloud, edge cloud, you hear a lot about cloud to the edge, um, which that ultimately means on prem to private cloud to edge. Uh, the way data works um, goes back to that single API being able to move it. And what we've done in that single API is we have what's called robust uh, infrastructure automation that actually refactors that for you so it always knows which stack is working on and that's seamless so um you know it's the hybrid it's the multi it's the hybrid on-prem infrastructure etc so and that's really key here is because whether it be the OROC cloud or the OROC cloud with the hardened security option it's literally as as simple as selecting that when we're spinning up a um, a vm uh, or your inventory or your um, instance, right? Is we can deploy this anywhere the technology is deployed. So we work really extensively on this model. If you think about 5G, and this is where I'm going to geek out for a second, is I want you, I want our partners and customers to understand what can we do with this technology, right? Like be a little innovative, be like read between the lines and help us shape and uh, look at. The different opportunities that are coming out there is as we prove this out with some really key DOD and DARPAs and the IARPAs and the ICs, um, you know, the word's going to get out there that this is truly a new capability. So, um, you know, again, working with the partner soup partners, um, but I love soup. It's, it's so easy. I mean, that's that's the way to go. And working with those really key partners, um, you know. Like Michelle said, you're not on an island by yourself. We are an actual company you can work with on these architectures and understand the art of the possible. So as you work through those hybrid multi-cloud and different infrastructure uh, capabilities, and really like on AI, right? What we're trying to do is the mathematical models um, aren't supporting the way data is manipulated. Uh, in order to move it, so they're trying to get that I mean, that analytics closer to the edge. So uh, we're pretty deep in on that as well. So um, really cool stuff on my side. Again, this is the picture that I painted up front, but this is really a, a what I believe a great way to show how OROC is built, how we're a little bit different, especially starting with that private fiber backbone that open stack open source and then again with intel and lockheed on the security side um this is completely different uh, technology above and beyond what any of the requirements are mandating out there and i even have some key customers are saying that ramp impact level isn't even close enough so what can you do so this becomes a lot of fun so look forward to talking to the partners and working with you guys Awesome. Thanks, Eric. And um, our community here on the phone, if you have any questions, you know, please put them in the chat. But I think, you know, a couple of key things. FedRAMP certified, that's a lift, right? You, you guys know you're going to probably see that on bids. FedRAMP certified, open source, that's huge, right? Especially for your customers. You can walk in there and, and talk to them about it. Um, and a hybrid cloud. So keywords when you're looking at RFPs or th things that are going to come to you naturally, edge, cloud, on-prem storage, those buzzwords ping us. Um, 
and let us know how we can help you and get you connected with OROC and the team. And um, it is a complex solution, but that's why I mentioned OROC's uh, bid support team. Um, that way they can help you with in writing the bid and submitting um, it and all the information. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Charlie because I think uh, Charlie can also offer additional support services that um, all of us at Synex can offer you on, on OROC as well. Charlie? For sure, yeah, and, and we're big again. We're very excited from our Cinex uh, Stellar Cloud family to have OROC available. Again, it, it expands our offerings and brings something really special and unique to the market. Um, but like Michelle just said, and like Eric has proven, it is a complex sale. Sure, cloud's complex. That's why let's have some conversations. Um, you know, let's have. And, and the great thing about OROC is, again, with that US based support, the customer service, somebody to talk to. And I will say this from us already working with partners on deals with OROC. They have been fantastic in terms of support and communication with partners. They want this to grow with you with partnerships. Um, so just as we wrap up, you know, there'll be follow up coming out to everyone. Thank you for your time. Um, those that are here, those we'll communicate with later. So much for the time and we will be in touch, but really think about it. Think about the high level, the questions you have, and let's, let's really encourage a call to, to really flesh this out a little more in the coming days and weeks and really look at some opportunities together. I would say if you price this up against the, anything else, uh, to, for an, you're responding to an RFP, I think you'd be very satisfied with what you're going to have from a security standpoint and the margin and price point for your for yourself and the customer. So really excited for everyone. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Michelle, and everyone for being here. We will be in touch very soon. Oh, rock rocks. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>